Um, all that summed up, a lot of good info there on what's going on in Cleveland to give us a little bit of context behind the Cooper name, uh, Kevin. So why don't you start us off here, um, kind of breaking down what you think to expect from Amari Cooper in a Buffalo Bills uniform over the last 11 weeks. Well, I started saying this before Jack came on and he agreed with my assessment here. So I'm going to reiterate. I think that acquiring Amari Cooper kind of demotes everyone. It, it kind of slides the rest of the Bills receivers into a more manageable slash serviceable position, right? Because you had Keon Coleman lined up out wide as your starting boundary wide receiver with Mac Collins. And that's just not going to cut at the NFL level. Maybe Coleman can get there someday, but that's a lot of pressure on the rookie. So you get Amari Cooper as a bona fide wide receiver one that takes the pressure off of Coleman. He doesn't have to go up against opposing CB ones anymore, or maybe even CB twos. And now he slides down into more of that more manageable role. Someone like Curtis Samuel, who was just kind of floating around. Joe Brady did not know what to do with him. We'll see. Maybe that still persists, but I think now maybe you can slot him in as that wide receiver four. That's a position that the Bills describe as someone who has that inside-outside flexibility. So maybe if you do that with Curtis Samuel, he can kind of settle in now. Mac Collins would slide down to wide receiver five, and I don't mean to leave out Khalil Shakir, but the Bills view that slot position as wide receiver three. So I think this is definitely a more well-rounded wide receiver room now, and I think that Cooper just presents a lot that the Bills didn't have because, like I said, he's going to be Josh Allen's go-to receiver now. He can run the full route tree. He can help you in the short game. He can help you in the deep game. But what Allen was really lacking and the Bills as a whole was that intermediate route runner. And we talked about his separation rate, and he is a very good route runner. And when you need a crucial third down or just you want to pick up 10, 15, 20 yards, that's your new guy. Go to Amari Cooper. Yeah, and we'll see how long the biggest questions around Amari and what his expectations are. How long is it going to take for him to ramp up? Brandon Bean made sure to tell us many times that it is a harder position to ramp up for. Uh, it's not Rasul Douglas. It's not even an offensive lineman. He used those examples. So the Bills have to continue to be successful and, and use him where appropriate and ramp him up from maybe just like the preseason. He is obviously conditioned. He's been in an NFL roster. It's not like he's been hurt. So you're talking about maybe from 25 to 30 plays to 30 to 5 to 40 hopefully to a full workload by the Miami game. Uh, but I think that like we mentioned with Jack, he's always elevated by Josh Allen. Josh Allen's always elevated a receiver on the roster. He hasn't so far this year. I think that you could see a big elevation. He's al always received 120 targets in his career. Uh, so will he get that here? If He's already got 52 um, this season. But um, I definitely think he has 70 targets in him for the rest of the year to get to his normal target average. And I think those 70 targets with Josh Allen are going to be miles better than the 70 target remaining that he would have gotten from Deshaun Watson. And he's going to do just enough to keep teams honest. I think that if you're going to now have to focus in on him on a game plan and teams are not going to really have any idea, like the Titans, maybe, you know, they're not really in it to make the playoffs this season, at least from an outsider's perspective. Uh, but they're going to go ahead and have no idea what the Bills are going to expect from him. And then equally into Seattle, who's fighting for a wild card spot into their playoff lives. Um, and so hopeful for the division, I'm sure. And then into Miami, who will have zero idea how the Bills will utilize him. So the Bills will have a minor advantage in their usual pretty know what you're going to get from Miami Buffalo games. Um, so Mike McDaniel is going to have to to deal with that, whether he has two or not. We'll see in a couple of weeks. But I my expectation is him that he plays very well and Josh Allen does elevate him and then. At the end of it, the Bills fans are going to be talking about how do we keep him here? Hopefully he didn't do too, too much to where he's in that range, 20 to 25, because I ultimately think that's part, probably what happened there is that he thought he should have gotten that Jerry Judy three-year extension, that three-year $52 million extension that Jerry Judy got. I think that Amari Cooper probably felt like I earned this, all good I was doing to make you to the playoffs with Joe Flack when you go and trade for uh, Jerry Judy, who's done nothing in his career in Denver, didn't elevate really anybody. And then you're going to give him the 52-5? And I would feel some type of way. I'm going to be honest. I was the guy that got you to the playoffs. I produced with four different quarterbacks and you go and trade for Jerry Judy, which is fine. But then you go and give him the three-year extension. Nah, like this isn't going to work. That was probably Watson's hand-picked decision or something that felt some distension. Um, and I think that Amari Cooper has at least um, enough to put on the field to show like, look at what I can do with an actual quarterback, with an actual offense that's going to make the playoffs. So I think that that ultimately is what's going to be best for Amari Cooper. So this is his 10th season in the league. 
in the previous nine seasons, he's had more than 100 targets in eight of those. And the only season that he didn't surpass 100 targets, he had 96. So he's had at least 95 targets every single year of his career and also seven 1,000-yard seasons. So this is a guy who just consistently puts up numbers. I compared him to Mike Evans when we had Jack on. Just two guys who are quiet. They don't boast, right? Like they don't want the spotlight. They don't need all the attention. And they just quietly go about their business. And I really appreciate that from Amari Cooper. And another stat that I have that I found interesting is that he only needs 264 to reach 10,000 career yards. So again, this is just a guy who consistently put up those numbers. And you talked about some of the quarterbacks that he's had to deal with and just the carousel that he's had. Even going back to maybe his his early days in Oakland or Dallas, just it's kind of been a revolving door for him. Now that he gets Josh Allen, I think the sky's the limit. I agree. Got some good advanced metrics in terms of what he's been able to do. Two point seven yards per separation. You know, some of the EPA data is not 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 good. Um, but we're going to have to you know trust the Bills and their Bills analytic department to have evaluated that. That's due to the offense. Who would know better than them having experience with Ken Dorsey? Um, and then maybe it's due to the quarterback play. Uh, but then that's why the Bills were able to get what they feel was like a good value brand. Uh, Pat McAfee said on his own show today that it should be a no brainer for any team to have traded, whether it's Adams or Cooper for a third round draft choice. That should be a no brainer. Um, it's not like that big of a risk, especially if you're hoping that that's a late third. You know, you're talking about a pick at the, at the, late, at the latest, you know, 96, but you're hoping that it's in the 90s, uh, especially in the Bills case where it's generally men. So it's not that large of a risk. Uh, for the Buffalo Bills, and especially when, you know, you could get a compensation pick back. If he does go and play really well and gets 25 a year, we're looking at a fourth-round draft choice uh, back for him anyways. So now you got a four and a six back um, for trading a three and had a rental of them. Or you get to keep the player if you if you are able to realize he's really great for your offense. Let's try to work out a team-friendly deal. Uh, I think that the Bills have some options, and now they're going to get 11 weeks of the player. Good first test against the Titans, though, Kevin. And I think that's what's really going to be a big test to see how Cooper can go off of that Ken Dorsey offense. There's got to be something there translatable, though, in terms of like, yes, Joe Brady has his own offense. But I have to imagine, and then obviously the Bills have Henry, his f- uh, former wide receivers coach in Dallas. There's got to be at least a little bit transferable about what Dorsey had in play, what the Bills have utilized in the past, what Henry has done Like good or bad aside from Ken Dorsey, there's got to be some similarities and some things that are going to help him, whether you like him, love him or in the middle of him. I was more in the middle. I thought he played uh, coach well with Josh as a combo, but definitely his deficiencies were too much as you got to the Broncos game uh, that Jack mentioned going to that Broncos game. Uh, being a complete mess from a Ken Dorsey perspective and then a Josh Allen perspective, really realistically. So I think that when you put all that together, You got somebody who I think's at least at a baseline. And that's why I think the Bills were comfortable with like, look, they know that he is a pro. He's worked with the receivers coach. And one of the questions that the Bills probably asked the receivers coach was, will he pick this up quickly? We're trading a third round draft choice for 11 weeks. Can he play by like the Miami week? Because Brandon Bean was pretty adamant he's playing this week. And uh, Sean McDermott was like a little bit more like coachy. You know, Sean McDermott is like a little bit more coachy coachy speak um but brandon bean's like nah he's playing and like i'd imagine the bills want him ramped up and with henry and maybe a little bit of that dorsey crossover that you're hoping that he's ramped up in 10 days yeah and i don't think it's going to be that hard because look what we had to deal with here from the bills wide receiver core you're you're talking about guys like matt collins and marquez valdez scantling So I I think, like I said, the sky's the limit because they set the bar so low that Cooper come in, he can come in and he can have five catches for 75 yards. And we're like, oh my God, thank you. This is beautiful again, right? And I'm glad you brought up some of those numbers and talking about Ken Dorsey, because when we were live yesterday for our breaking news coverage, didn't you have a stat that supported the Bills running more 11 personnel this year? Uh, yes. So the Bills ran 53% in 11 personnel, yep, up to not including last week's game. So 53 before Monday Night Football. So 53% in 11 personnel. And they had a pretty positive EPA throwing out of it. Three receivers, uh, AKA three receivers on the field. Get Matt Collins out of here. Get MVS's reps out of here. And yeah, that's that's 53% out of 11. So as much as we've been thinking that Joe Brady wants to be more run heavy, I mean, yeah, he does get the run game going, right? But 
maybe we haven't seen as much 12 personnel as we originally thought or what we originally intended. And now you get someone like Amari Cooper. I think it's only going to sway back towards 11 personnel even more so here. And that kind of leads me to Dalton Kincaid because the reason why I think we were all bought into this everybody eats approach, at least me, it was predicated on Dalton Kincaid having a Travis Kelsey-like season. I really thought that he was going to be the Diggs replacement as that wide receiver one. Obviously, he plays a different position. But everything that we were hearing, I just thought that Kincaid was going to take over and he was really going to start to be like Travis Kelsey and the offense was going to filter through him. Well, so far, he's really not playing up to par with that prototype or with that first round pick that the Bills used on him a couple of years ago. So I think I talked about how this takes the pressure off of someone like Keon Coleman. This also takes the pressure off of, off of uh, Kincaid because now he can go back into a role that he's more comfortable in. And I think opposing defenses were picking up on that as well, because what we see, at least in the Arizona game, to open up the year, they're bracketing him double, triple coverage because they knew that he was probably going to be their top wideout this year. And so far, it's been Khalil Shakir, but Kincaid is up there, too. I mean, he's still been solid, but he hasn't really popped off like we expected. Now that you have someone like Amari Cooper to distract those DBs, you get guys like Kincaid and Shakir to work the middle, work underneath, someone like Curtis Samuel. I think that opens up everything else for all these other receivers. And I, I guess one final thing I'll say is I think the new approach is Amari Cooper is going to eat and then everyone else will snack around him. And I think it's going to be a great combination. Yeah, and that's, that's all you can hope for. And the data has been updated today, actually, from the personnel data. And not much has changed, at least, from the uh, personnel packages Bills are actually 53.4% out of 11 personnel uh, with a total EPA of 0.15. The Bills offense is good in general, so that's not shocking. Uh, 0.21 EPA per pass out of it. But which, what's what's also been shocking is we'll see how much Amari Cooper will play in the 12 personnel package because they've only ran it 18.9%. We were expecting more 12 personnel, but a 0.36 EPA throwing uh, out of, excuse me, 0.73% throwing out of the uh, package. Uh, which is first in the NFL, throwing out of 12 personnel. Uh, the Bills have been uh, mighty, mighty successful uh, so far uh, this season. So that's something to keep an eye on uh, when it comes to personnel formations and what he may, uh, what the Bills may be looking at in terms of personnel packages that that they're hoping to be able to to achieve. So that's that's something to keep in mind. Only 18% out of 12 personnel. Uh, which I think we all thought was going to be a little bit higher uh, than just, you know, 53.4% out of 11. So that's been uh, a pretty big indicator of what the Bills are, are hoping to achieve this year, Kevin. So we'll see how Amari Cooper plays into that role. Uh, there's definitely going to be more than enough spots on the fi uh, on the field for him to get plenty of, of, of run um, and not really. You're just eating into Matt Collins, let's be honest. Like you're not eating into – I don't think it should affect Keon Coleman. It may affect his positioning, but I don't think it's ultimately going to affect where Keon Coleman and how often Keon Coleman plays. So I think that that's the one, number one thing you're like, it's not going to affect the slot receiver and Shakir. So who does that leave? MBS who's been cut probably ultimately still will affect the amount of snaps that Samuel does see. There's not going to be a whole position that is going to be available. And then obviously, you know, Matt Collins is going to, you know, you're not going to have that quote unquote run blocking pass blocking decoy. Uh, you got to actually have a receiver in there, not just a guy who's going to you're going to hope confuses the other team. So uh, that's that's ultimately how I see the um, the roster breaking down from a receiver standpoint in terms of where are these snaps going to come from. But, you know, the, the breakdown of 12 and 11 makes makes a lot of sense. So that's that's how it's going to ultimately uh, break down. And you still did the final note here. You would be shocked. You know that MVS had 141 offensive snaps. It's not like he, he had, he had two. two receptions on those. So Correct. he had two receptions in a hundred. I got caught. Snaps. So I got caught. It's, it's not a, and then the week that there's 16 shaver snaps on the week that Shakir didn't play. So like, yeah, that's not a lot, but that's the bare minimum of what you can give Cooper day one, 22 snaps that he MBS MBS had last week, 28 snaps the week prior without us, uh, without Shakir. So you're still looking at a situation where Ke Keon Coleman's still going to get 44 snaps Shakir is going to ramp up his snaps a little bit, um, but you have at least 30 snaps to give him uh, 26, most notably from um, 22 last week, excuse me, from MVS. So 141 snaps right there that is going to go to Amari Cooper that you don't even need to edit anybody else's playing time. So, um, and then from there, I think you, 
you know, Matt Collins isn't seeing, sorry, Matt Collins is not seeing 46 snaps <laughs> anymore. So right there. So between the MVS and then you're going to steal some from uh, Matt. So Matt Collins is going to take MVS is 26 snaps. And then I think that Amari Cooper is going to take Matt Collins is 50 snaps. That's how that's, that's Perfect. what's going to happen here. I think it's pretty, it's a pretty seamless transition for like, here you go. Um, Joe Brady. Now you have this, you can still use Matt Collins. Um, but now you're going to get Cooper for 40 to 50 snaps a game rather than some mishmash of shavers and all these snaps for Hollins and MVS. Well, as I alluded to, everyone slides down to a more comfortable position now, and I think that should provide some comfort to Bill's Mafia. And the final thing that I'll say is, as much as I was just saying that Amari Cooper is going to eat in this offense, I don't think that he's going to be one of those receivers who is going to demand the ball. I think he's going to buy in with this approach and say, hey, like, I am good. I'm going to do what I can to get open, but I'm not going to scream at Josh Allen's face, right? I'm not going to embarrass him on the sidelines. I'm not going to cry and complain and have all these cryptic social media tweets or posts or Instagram or whatever. So I, I think that he is going to get his, but it'll come, right? Like, you don't have to force it. Josh doesn't have to feel like, oh, man, I better throw Amari Cooper's way 10 times or else I'm going to hear it in the locker room afterwards. I think it's just going to be a nice seamless transition. And I think that Joe Brady will be able to get this very smoothly intact here. 